So settle into your posture and take a minute to ground yourself physically, doing whichever process you prefer to ground yourself. You can scan through the body. You can encourage in light, in alignment of the body, but just spend a few minutes settling physically and letting the busyness of the day settle. and bring the focus to the breath. Simple and direct and focused, just the breath. When your mind wants to revisit something from today or plan something for the future, just say not now, come back to the breath gently.
and revive your positive motivation, coming back to love, compassion, joy, and equanimity, explaining them back to yourself in a heartfelt way, reawakening them. and shift to analysis and come back to your identification of what love is, intellectually and experientially, make love the prominent focus. What is it? How is it? This wish for others to have happiness. And holding that awareness of love, now ask yourself very deep and personal questions about what is the near enemy of love for you. The near enemy, that which looks like love and behaves as if it's loving, but is in fact something else like attachment. What does the near enemy of lo love look like for you personally in your life when it's shifted from a positive state of mind to something that's actually a delusion? Just scanning through your life, relationships and experiences. Find that drive that lies or exaggerates, that has a pretense of love. And just stay with your observations. Try to understand yourself more deeply. 
when it seems as though you want happiness for someone, but actually you're wanting happiness from someone. The behaviors externally might be the same in either case, but what is your mind like, your heart like in either case? And so it might feel like love when there is some sort of warmth present, but that warmth could be coming from many conditions. It could be coming from the pride having ego satisfaction. The near enemy of love can look like excitement, can look like urgency. Compare it to love, which is calm and steady, contented. So the near enemy of love is hard to find, but once you understand the way it manifests, it's easier to catch it and readjust back to a mind that is actually loving. And so then look for the opposite of love or the far enemy of love, much easier to catch but still inhibits your progress on the path of having immeasurable love. For you personally, what does the far enemy of love look like? Your own anger, resentments, your personal forms of cynicism and bitterness. Look for those far enemies of love understand the habits within yourself. What are they like on a daily basis in your everyday life?
Is your far enemy of love, your anger, more likely to be hot and boiling? Or is your form more likely to be cold and stiff and withdrawn? For you specifically, what's more common? And as you look at this far enemy of love that can arise sometimes within yourself, try and notice the relationship between that anger, whether it's hot or cold, and the attachment that preceded it. What expectation didn't get fulfilled? What assumption wasn't met? What kind of attachments do you have that when they are blocked, the next thing that happens is some sort of anger, annoyance or irritability? What are your common ways of being unrealistic about people? When attachment doesn't get what it wants, anger jumps in as if to defend or help attachment to get what it wants. But attachment can never get what it wants sustainably, consistently, because it's based on an expectation that is exaggerated. It's based on false ideas about oneself and, one, and others. Because of that, it's doomed to fail. So then the grasping mind, the hungry mind of attachment changes to the angry mind. Dismissive and withholding fiery and judgmental, many forms. But how is your own anger related to your own attachment? Being very personal and specific.
And so knowing more deeply the near enemy of attachment and the far enemy of anger and their relationship to one another, how they take turns and reinforce each other, come back to identifying love. See if you can get even more clear about its purest form that you can connect with so far on your path. What is your most expansive, most creative, most unconditional form of love that you can connect with so far? And imagine that that purest form of love has a seat at your heart center, warm, taking the form of golden light that slowly fills up your whole body. From crown to toes, you become filled with this light of loving kindness, which then radiates out through your pores, out in all directions. Through the walls, to the people in the neighborhood. Filling each person it meets, left and right front and back, north and south. East and west. up and down in all intermediate directions, evenly spreading. through the continent and surrounding continents and all bodies of water and land, blanketing the earth with light. The light of loving kindness that brings inner stability and contentment and joy that creates outer protection soothing and pacifying conflict, settling agitation, inviting wisdom, And then strengthening that loving action and loving protection, we can add the mantra of Tara Buddha. 
Om Tare, tu Tare, tu Re, Soha. 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 And you can continue the mantra under your breath silently to yourself or just allow it to continue to reverberate within you radiating out om tari tu tari tu re so hard. Om Tare Tu Tare Ture Soha. And dedicate all of the positive merit of the day to achieving your fullest potential for the benefit of all sentient beings. Relaxing your attention. <laughs>